Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. We're here today. It's a beautiful day. The Lord has given us. Thank you for being here at Meadowview Church, 768 Summit Road, Eden, North Carolina. Uh, we're here to praise God, to study His Holy Word, to fellowship, to, to have fun. Uh, God expects us to, to be joyous, and uh, we want to certainly do that. But again, thank you for being here today. For our announcements, uh, we need to look around and see who's not here today and let them know we missed them. Bingo Tuesday night. Uh, we had 20 here last Tuesday night, and uh, we got room for more. We've had 23, and we have more than room for more than that. Um, pray for uh, countries of Ukraine and Israel. We need bingo prizes for the nursing home. I was at the nursing home yesterday and did a program. Uh, I told the history of some of the old-timey songs, and then uh, and I had CDs, and after I told the history of the song, I played that particular song with the CD and uh, uh, had communion with the residents that were able to come in and be with us. Uh, and I'm, I'm doing that right now every third Saturday uh, of each month. Uh, we need canned food for uh, the Spray United Methodist Church Food Pantry. Uh, we, we loaded up one car last week uh, that was going back there. We're, we have several people from Spray that come from being good. And uh, anyway, we have a basket there in the foyer that you can put it in or under the table or, or wherever. I bought some things this week, but I uh, had other things to bring today, so I'll bring mine a little later. Uh, today, our sermon is number six on encouragement. I'll probably move on to something else. I, I, I like a series of sermons, but that also hampers me if, if uh, uh, on special occasions if I need to do something different. So uh, today's probably our last uh, part of this series that I'm doing on encouragement. You've got to be here next Sunday. Next Sunday is Appreciation Sunday. And uh, it's very important that we have every single person here we do appreciate you. We're, we're thankful for you and all that you do. Now, not only for this church, but in, but in praising and serving God. So, uh, uh, try your best to be here next Sunday if possible. Uh, do we have any other announcements today? Do we have any birthdays? Anniversaries? Uh, I, have, I have received a note this week from a couple that came to our hot dog supper uh, a couple of Saturdays ago, about a week ago, and said that they really enjoyed the hot dog supper. It was nice to get out and meet new friends and good to, to see everybody that was here for our hot dog supper. So uh, I appreciate this older couple. Uh, and, you know, their prayers and their support of our church and, and their, uh, their note that, that they uh, sent me. Um, are you excited to be in the presence of God in this church family today? Are you broken from your sins. Let us show it by thinking about the real worship as we sing our first song today. And our first song <coughs> is Sweet Hour of Prayer. I'm talking about prayer today. So, uh, Sweet Hour of Prayer is found. Uh, everything's in our blue book today. And if you'll turn in your blue book to 496, please. Sweet Hour of Prayer, stand as you're able. 496. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Please join with me as we say together our call to worship as you find in our bulletin. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. You may be seated. Joey, if you'll come up, we'll have our children's sermon. Will you come up today? And I'll be back in a moment. So I'll get one more thing. reminds us that a lot of people look at all of us and they, they think about one thing about us and they don't see anything else. And Sometimes that thing that they see is maybe a mistake that we made and we, we, we all do up from time to time. We all uh, make mistakes. And some people focus on that one thing when Look at all the, the empty space that's all around it. Uh, and they don't look at the person and how much good and love they share and how many, many good things that they do. Uh, and, and, you know, that's something I want us and everybody in the, in the church today to remember. Don't look at just one thing about a person that may not be as, as something that we really are proud of. But, but look at our whole life and all that we do and to think about the, the, our whole being, the, the goodness that's in us, the love that's in us, the, the helpfulness that's in us. So um, remember, you know, everybody do so, and we just have to forgive them and go on. So let us pray, Lord. Thank you so much for with Joe and his family. And to just be with them, Lord, and lift them up and bless them. We ask this. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to give you a coloring book and some cookie. And thank you for coming up. for just a second into the, uh, the library because I had forgot the crayons. <laughs> so, and what's a coloring book if you don't have crayons? <laughs> so, uh, please join with me as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, earth and in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, Son our Lord. Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, crucified dead, and buried. buried. The third, third day, day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the, the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen.
Good morning, I'm a frog. Fully rely on God, remember? Last week I had a friend and he flew away. He didn't come to church that <laughs> Sunday. But today, Butterfly is here. And I'm so glad that he came to be with us today. And the Butterflies is uh, just a real interesting character. Now, I'm going to let Butterfly tell you all about him. Well, first of all, my name is Kay, K-A-Y, and I'll, I'll explain what that means in just a minute. But I want you to remember that human beings and butterflies are very similar. You, you may have learned in science, and the preacher taught science for 41 years, and uh, they actually raise some butterflies occasionally in school. And it starts off as, as, as an egg cell that's laid on plants. And then there's the, the larva, the, the caterpillar. And uh, it is sheds about four or five times. And finally, it, it becomes the pupa, which is a crystallis, it's like a little cocoon. And then gradually, over a period of time, the uh, pupa, uh, sheds and the wings come out and it's able to start flying around and it becomes an adult butterfly. Now, something that a lot of people don't know, you can't help that butterfly when it's in the crystal estate to come out of that cocoon that it's in. Because if, if, if you do, its wings aren't going to develop and it will never fly. So, it has to go through four stages. But you know, as you human beings, you have a four stages too, in one way of looking at it. You start off as an egg cell, and, and then there's birth, and then you're, you're aging through life. You start off as the baby, uh, you're a toddler, and a teenager, and an adult, and uh, like some of us here today, senior citizens. <laughs> and, and then the fourth stage, there is death, but immediately with death is heaven, if we believe in Jesus Christ. Remember the thief on the cross said that, Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. So butterflies have four stages called complete metamorphosis. And one way of looking at human beings is you have four stages too. Now, so, so some interesting information about butterflies. Um, we live on an all-liquid diet. We drink from mud puddles once in a while if we need some water. We cannot fly if we're real cold. We are nearsighted, but believe it or not, we can see colors. Butterflies have lots of little tricks they can use to keep from being eaten by other animals. Uh, camouflage helps, and also we taste bad. Uh, we also secrete a kind of poison that uh, helps to protect us. So remember, that, you know, we are helpful, protect us, plant milkweed that we love. And I need to tell you what K stands for. It stands for know about yourself. Now that's important. You need to know what makes you happy, what makes you sad, how I can help other people. You need to know as much about yourself, your health, your your, your mentality, and, and, and everything. The, the more you know about yourself, the more you can serve God. So remember, learn as much as you can. Have knowledge about yourself.
And Frog, thank you for allowing me to come today. I'm sorry I didn't make it next week, last week, but, but I'm here now, so you'll see me again. So it's nice to see all these people out here today, too. Thank you for coming. How has God blessed you this past week? Okay, Judy. Uh, he let Tim and have a safe flight to California. Amen. And we pray that they, uh, uh, Frankie and Tim, will have a nice safe flight back next Saturday. Others. Diane. Big mess to clean up and probably plenty of firewood for this winter. <laughs> Next winter. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Others. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is Amen. good. Amen. If you'll turn in your blue book, please, to 352. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. I'm going to play through it one time before we sing it. Some of you may not be familiar with it. It's, it's just a, it's a neat song. So uh, uh, anyway, let me play through it one time before we start it. Notice at the end of each verse, you go back to the first of the song and, and repeat that refrain.
You did great, and now everybody's awake. <laughs> That's good. Uh, if you will uh, turn in the back of your blue book to 739 for our responsive reading. 739. Please join with me. Why do the nations conspire and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers take counsel together against God and God's anointed saying, Let us burst their bonds and cast their cords from us. The one who sits in the heavens laughs and holds him the derision. Then God will speak to them in anger and terrify them in fury saying, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree of the Lord, who said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord, fear and change. Humble yourselves before the Lord, lest God be angry and you perish in the way, for God's wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. We have many on our prayer list today that uh, we want to lift up. We want to lift up Tabitha Godwin, our nation, David Moore, those not here today, our schools, James Stevens, Karen Johnson, the country of Ukraine, Willis Kizar, Dwayne Jeffries, William Joyce, Dave Price, UNC Rockingham Rehab, uh, Ricky Hall, Cindy Bowling, Joe Bowling, Betty Booth, Micah Gardner, Mildred Leak family, Laura Brown, the Simmons family, Jimmy Seacrest, Christy Swift, all churches, unspoken request, and there's a, a number of those. Uh, Eden Rehab Center, Winona Price, Carol's daughter, Thacker family, Country of Israel, the Lawson family, uh, Dora and Atha, Jesse Carter, Joe Brown, Carolyn Dove, the Ridney family, Anna Gant, the firemen and first responders, um, Kathy and Jim Eames, Rim Bolding, Denver Shelton, Jessica Hatcher, uh, Diamond Cable, Dennis Kendrick, Dalton family, Mary Young, Rita Vernon, William Carter, Tim Mize, Jerry Smith, Judy Fagg, uh, James Or. Um, Osborne, uh, Donna Gallardo, Joe Shelton, uh, Calvin and Susan Stoltz, uh, Suzanne Ellis, uh, Sylvia Smith, Barney McBride, <coughs> Jerry Dickerson, Connie Williams, Randolph Carter, uh, and Sonia and should be Wason, W-A-S-S-O-N. Also want to lift up uh, Peggy's sister, Frida Scott, and also... Uh, keep the Elon Cook family in your prayers. Do we have additions or updates? Yes. Bonnie O'Dale. She's Bonnie Kay. O'Dale. She's Kay Price's sister. Okay. Thank you. Others? Let's pause for our meditation and our prayers. Lord, we know that you're here with us. We can feel your presence. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your blessings, all that you do for each one of us, Lord. We are grateful. Lord, there's so many people that are sick. Be with each one in their own individual needs. Lift them up, 
remove their pain, help their bodies to heal. Lord, be with their caregivers. Be with those that are grieving. And give them peace and comfort. And Lord, there, there's so many problems, individual problems, family problems, organizational problems, community problems, our country's problems, world problems. Just, just help us to be able to find resolutions. Help us to look to you for guidance in these resolutions. Lord, we are thankful for prayer. You said that you wanted us to, to pray often and help us to do that. They don't have to be long prayers. We don't have to necessarily get into a closet all by ourselves to pray. But you want us to share with you. And you said that you would hear our prayers and you would act upon them. Lord, be with this church. Help each one of us. Help us to be obedient to you, that we might do your will. Thank you for your holy word. Help us to make it a light into our life. Help us to go out into the world and win the lost. Lead and guide us, Father. For we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Someone would like to ask Francis and Joe if they would come forward for our morning offering, please. <coughs> Notice that our balloons stayed up another week. I didn't do anything to them. Uh, I'm very surprised. Look at yourself in the mirror, because I look in the mirror, gosh, what a metamorphosis. <laughs> <laughs> took a while, took a while to get there, but uh, it's there. <laughs> All righty. I'm going to let it go. <laughs> All right, mighty fine. Uh, in the book of Jeremiah 12, 9, it talks about the great speckled bird. And uh, it's in reference to the uh, the people of Judah and how people around them were against them and everything. And they the piece that I read they talked in metaphors back then because I guess they didn't want people to find out what they were referring to. <laughs> right. But this song is uh, Roy Acuff 
And this other guy actually wrote it. I can't remember his name, but Roy Eckhoff did this years and years ago. And um, we're going we're to give this one a shot, Great Speckled Bird. so true for us and uh, us as adults and us as Christian people we forget we forget how great God is we, we take it for granted but uh, tell me how great thou art oh Lord my God when I in awesome wonder consider all what's it the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul.
Thanks be to God. Again, I need to give uh, some credit to Tommy C. Hegel for some of the thoughts that I'm sharing today about praying to encourage. We've talked about encouragement for the last several weeks. Do you ever wonder how you can encourage your family, your friends, your associates. Today we're going to find some principles on praying to encourage. God expects us to pray for others. If we look 
in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23, where we will see how the prophet Nathan uh, says that we can do this. He, he says, and I quote, Far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. This verse indicates that it's a sin if we don't pray for other people, especially our families, both their physical and their spiritual, and also friends. We know Paul prayed for the Thessalonians because he writes, how can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of your God because of you? few things encourage people like knowing that we are praying for them. In this text, Paul reveals three things that we must do to pray encouraging prayers. We must pray frequently, earnestly, and specifically. Now I'll repeat, we need to pray frequently earnestly and specifically. First, we must pray frequently. Paul writes, night and day we pray that we may see you again and surely what is lacking in your faith, supply what's lacking in your faith. If, if we look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, we, we see a command that God gives. And it says, I should pray continually. Now, at first glance, this command seems unreasonable, maybe even impossible. Does it mean that we have to stay in a prayer room or in a, in a, a prayer closet all the time? No. This verse indicates the frequency of prayer rather than constant, continuous prayer all day long. The inspired apostle is not telling us to pray longer, but to pray more frequently. And long prayers have their place, yes. It's, it's unrealistic, however, to pray hours at a time every day. Rather than having long periods of prayer, it, it's probably more important, more productive, to pray frequently throughout the day for short periods of time, even if it's just for a few seconds. When we pray more frequently, we actually talk to God more, and we are much more specific in the prayer that we want to share. This is how Paul prayed. Philippians 1 verse 3 says, he writes that he thanks God every time he remembers the Philippian believers. Whenever the Philippian believers came to mind, Paul would say a prayer for them. In the morning, or in the afternoon, as, as Paul was there in his trade, and you know what his trade was, it was, it was making tents. The believers there in Thessalonica came to his mind. He would pray for them. As people or situations come to our minds, we should say a, a brief prayer or whatever it is that we're thinking about. We may not be able to pray aloud or even with our eyes closed, but we can pray silently, we can pray quickly. I pray while I'm driving sometimes. I can't close my eyes out in the car driving down the highway, but I can still pray. I don't even have to bow my head. I pray when God comes to mind. Most of the prayers that we find in the Bible are short. And, and even including the Lord's Prayer, uh, if, if we look in the uh, NIV translation of the Bible, it's 52 words. If we look in the King James Version, it's 66 words. Not, not a long prayer. The shortest prayer in the Bible is just three words. You 
I'm sure remember Peter. He was out in the boat. He was scared to death. He saw a ghost coming toward him and uh, he, he realized that it was Jesus during that storm. He begins to sink because he takes his eyes off of Jesus. And he prays, Matthew 14, verse 10. Three words. Lord, save me. Simple prayer, but very direct. Was Peter's prayer answered? Certainly it was. He didn't die out there sinking down in, 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 the, in the water and, and, and drowned. Our prayers don't have to be long. They don't have to be filled with Christian jargons. Just before worship <laughs> services, when people ask me to remember them in prayer, I immediately say a brief prayer while I've got them right then on my mind. Because if I don't, sometimes I, as you, sometimes we might postpone it or even forget it. If we try to pray more by praying longer, <coughs> we'll probably become bored, we'll become dissatisfied with our prayer life. If we pray shorter, more frequent prayers, we will find that our prayer life is exciting and it's rewarding. To pray encouraging prayers, we must pray frequently. And second, we must pray earnestly. Paul tells the Thessalonians, he not only prayed night and day for them, but he prayed most earnestly for them. The word translated earnestly is pop at a pep as so, refers to intense, sincere prayer. It means it can't be a half-hearted, memorized, or a habitual prayer, and it's fine for little kids to say, now I'm going to lay me down to sleep, we all did that when we were kids. Or, uh, bless me and my, my wife, our son, uh, in this case, Nick, and, and Amanda, and, and, you know, just, just bless us, Lord. When we pray earnestly, our prayers should be serious, intense, not petty, not trivial. Hebrews 10, 22 emphasizes this. I should draw near to God with a sincere heart. The word sincere means without deceit, without pretense or hypocrisy. When King David told his son Solomon that God had chosen Solomon to build a temple there in Jerusalem, David also gave him a, a, a solemn warning saying, and you, my son Solomon, acknowledge the God of your father and sin and serve him with wholehearted devotion, with a willing mind. And then David declares about God in 1 Corinthians 28, verse 9. God searches my heart and understands every motive behind my thoughts. We should never insult God's intelligence by praying prayers that are not earnest just so that we can say that we prayed. God repeatedly reminds us to search our minds and our hearts so that we don't come to Him with pretense, we don't come to Him with false concern. God told the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. To pray encouraging prayers. We've got to pray frequently, earnestly, and third, we have to pray specifically. Sometimes our prayers are ineffective because they're too general. Prayer says, God, God, please remember Tim or Joe or Bill or whomever. Lord, please be with Susie. I pray that you bless Margaret. They're just vague 
request. We should not recognize the answer if it came because we don't even know what we prayed for. God was very specific in praying for us, his followers. He, he didn't pray vaguely. He didn't just say, Lord, be with them, or remember them. In, in John 17, 17, it says, Sanctify them by truth. Your word is truth. The word testify, sanctily, is peiazo, means to make holy or set apart. It means to set apart from the world to be used by God. This is a very specific request. But Jesus says it's even more specific than that. He asked God to do it through his word, the Bible. This process includes reading, hearing God's word through preaching and teaching, and in other words, Jesus was praying God would use his holy word as a cleansing agent in your and my lives. As 1 Thessalonians 3, 10 through 13 reveals, Paul was very specific in his prayers. We find five things that Paul has said. He prays that we may see you again. He means he wanted to see them again personally, face to face. To be honest, when I, I pray for different people, I might say, Lord, I don't want to see them for a while, or do you know anything like that? Second, he, he prayed God would use him and his team to apply what is lacking in your faith. Paul wanted to return because he knew that the believers needed to further their t learning about faith. He wanted them to have great victories. Paul knew the purpose of his teaching and his preaching. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12 describes the purpose of all apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and Christians. It says, to prepare God's people for service or ministry so the body of Christ, the church, may be built up. And we've talked about the fact that we are all ministers for Christ. We all have spiritual gifts. Some of us have speaking gifts. Some have service gifts. We're able to, to use them to build up, to strengthen, to encourage the church. This means we've got to do more than just pray. We must put feet to our prayers, and that's what Paul did when he wrote in 1 Thessalonians. He said, when we pray, we should not be asking God to do something that we can do. We should all do what we can and ask God to do what only he can do. Third, Paul also prays, now may our God the Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. Satan is always putting himself as a hindrance and an obstacle in the way when we try to encourage others in our faith. Paul prays God would open the door for him to go back to Thessalonia. Undoubtedly, Paul believed that this was a promise that Jesus would keep. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open to you. That the verb ask, seek, and knock, they're all present tense, indicating continuous action. This verse could be translated, keep on asking, keep on seeking, <clears throat> keep on knocking. We must keep on because sometimes God doesn't answer our prayers immediately. Remember, sometimes uh, God basically answers our prayers in Three ways. Yes, no, or wait. Uh, 
we, we've got to keep on. If we continue to trust and pray, God promises for everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds, and he who knocks the door will be open. Matthew 7, 8. Like Paul, we are to keep knocking on closed doors until we know God, not the evil one, has closed that door. For Paul prays, may the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else just as ours does for you. 1 Thessalonians 3.12 The word for love here is agape, and you're familiar with that Greek word. It's self-sacrificing love even for the unlovable. That sometimes hits us hard. We need to love everybody. It is the kind of love that God demonstrates for us for while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Amen. Romans 5, 8. It's this kind of love. We, we cannot work up this kind of love by our own efforts, our own reasoning. Romans 5, 5 describes it as in, in these words, God pours his love into my heart by the Holy Spirit which he has given me. Agape love only comes as Christ fills our hearts with the person of the Holy Spirit. He begins to produce within us this, uh, a fruit of spirit, the first part of which is love. The more Christ rules in our hearts, the more we're going to love. If you want to know how much Christ rules in your heart, see how much you and I can love others. Agape love strengthens and encourages fellow believers, and it reaches out to unbelievers. Paul and his companions demonstrated this kind of love by putting their loves at risk by being the gospel to the Thessalonian people. And five, Paul prays, may he strengthen your heart so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus Christ comes with his holy ones. That's chapter 3, verse 13. When Jesus comes, he wants us to be blameless. Alonos, which means without any outstanding faults. The word holy means set apart for God's service. Holy basically means different from the world. As Christians, we're called to be different in our morals, our attitudes, and our desires. Many of us pray generally because we're afraid to step out in faith and to pray specifically. However, James 4 verse 2 says, I do not have because I do not ask God. This means we don't ask specifically. Not only should we pray specifically like Paul, but we should also let the people for whom we are praying know specifically that we're praying for them. That's important. If we pray that God is going to heal, encourage, give wisdom, guide, or whatever that specific need is, let that person know we're praying for them. This generally adds to the encouraging effect of our prayers. If we pray encouraging prayers, we must pray frequently, earnestly, and specifically. Nothing gives God greater pressure than answering our prayers. He loves to do that. Maybe God has brought someone to your mind right now that, that you need to pray for. If so, begin to put God's word into practice by praying for them. Think about it in your mind and your heart. Who are the people that you need to pray for frequently, earnestly, 
and specifically, and when will you and I do that? Let us pray, Lord. You are amazing. We don't understand you. And yet you love us, and you love to hear our prayers. Help us to do a better job. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn today, Have Thine Own Way, 382 in the Blue Book. Let us stand as your able. 382. some others to come with you next Sunday for Appreciation Sunday. And I go in peace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Amen.